Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get my little angelfish onto some of this rapashi grub pie, okay? I've made some up here. Nice little pot full there. We're going to feed some for the bench as well. Chuck some in the, in the old bench tank. I can do that while you guys are here. Got my little spoon somewhere. Somewhere. Here it is. Right, going to get a blob of this stuff out. I normally put a piece in about that kind of size in the bench tank. There's a lot of a lot of fish in here. We've got a lot of the. Um... Oh, where am I going? And we'll just sink that down, it's nice and slow. Like I just said, we've got a lot of fish in here, and they're all going to start picking away on that. The endlers will be on that pretty quick, but the uh, the betters are used to feeding on it as well. And it won't be long before all the bits start coming up in the water and they start feeding on all that as well. It's very, very good stuff. But what we're going to do today is we're going to mix, well I've already mixed some of this stuff up. But I've got my baby angelfish just down here in the tank. I'm going to spin the camera around, alright? And, um, and we'll put some in there because what happens is, when they used to, what I've got here, they're used to feeding on these which are the old uh, water worms. You can see them there in that syringe. Well, you can kind of see them in that in there. But they're used to feeding on these guys and they sort of get programmed to feed on very, very small live foods like that. Now we want to get them across to this stuff, which is very powdery. You can feed it, you can sprinkle it in um, dry as well. They will take it dry. Just a little pinch of this stuff. I'll show you what it's like. As you can see, it's like a little, very, very fine powder. And you can use that straight out the pot if you like or what I like to do I find it tends to go down and go in amongst the gravel and the fish don't really they don't find it as much but what I've got in there is a few shrimp and when the shrimp are in there they tend to pick away at it goes up into the water column and then they'll nail it so what I'll do is I'm going to put a little blob of this stuff in here I'll turn the camera around okay and you can see them attacking it Right, okay guys, there you go, you can see it on the bottom there, on that almond leaf. The shrimps haven't picked up on the scent yet. The little angelfish are buzzing around, some of them are just starting to get that little shape now, if you can see. Oh, he's a bit interested, look, there you go, oh, that's a good sign. They're going for it already. But the shrimps will soon find it. And when you keep it in a big block like this, they pick what they want off. When you put the powder in, I always find it goes in between the, the substrate. The shrimps get some of it out, but a lot of it will go in, and that's going to add to the pollution of your water, and you don't want that. You want it to just stay in a big block. You can leave it in there for a few hours. It's not going to mind. They'll slowly pick away at it, but I wouldn't leave it in any more than sort of half a day. Then just get your little siphon in there, or a turkey baster, and suck, suck the rest of it out and blow it into another tank. If you've got another tank, then the bigger fish will just pick that off in no time at all. Because you don't want to be polluting your tank up. And with fry tanks, you've got to be super careful, and those water parameters have got to be spot on. Otherwise, you're going to start losing the fry. You get any of that ammonia buildup or higher nitrates, and you're going to start losing the fry. They'll just start dropping like flies, and you don't want that. But you saw a couple of them there. There's a lovely big buried female yellow sakura there. Lots and lots of berries on her. Check that girl out. Absolutely stunning. You can see what I said before. If you're unfamiliar with shrimp, shrimp have got little tiny pincers on the front. And what they do, some of the harder stuff, they've got like the little claws inside. But on the outside, they've got very, very fine little brushes. And what that does is that scrapes off the biofilm from leaves, from the substrate, from the glass and it's just like literally two little, a little brush on each side of the claw so they're constantly, constantly feeding away little angel fish there, look they're slowly getting their shape but that's how they do it, that's how they feed and as you can see the angel fish fry are always lurking around by the shrimp, the shrimp aren't going to pay them any attention whatsoever because they're living but if one of them dies 
they're going to sink to the bottom obviously and then the shrimp will will clean them up that's why I always keep a couple in with a fry because it's always handy to for those little for the old janitors there to keep everything going and they stirring up little bits for the for the fry as well you can sort of see that the blue coming out now in that angel fish fry there as well some of them are smaller than others as what happens there you go she's found that big mother load of food now look she's gonna get tucked into that no doubt fanning those little babies away and she's on it super excited look at what I found but you see what she's doing now she's knocking all those little bits off those are the bits that the that the baby fish are gonna pick up and the ones that are used to feeding on the micro worms that haven't adjusted to the other food they'll start picking those little bits off in the water column as she kicks them up and that'll get them used to feeding on this stuff which is high in protein and it's going to give them a lot more growth there's a nice little example there as you can see they're starting to come in now and pick the bits off as she's uh, messing around with it I do feed this tank quite a lot that's why the shrimp aren't going mad because they're quite f they've got quite a lot of food stored up in them they're not that they're not that hungry like the other tank where I put a piece in and they go bananas for it because there's a lot more mouths to feed in there not so many in here so they're basically clearing up most of the food that the uh, that the babies baby angels are missing and like I said I've had these guys in my tanks now some of these those ones that you can see in front you can see the shell the coloration on them isn't fantastic and that was one of the reasons why I took them out when I was uh, breeding them before because they I didn't want to put that coloration back in to get weaker color in the shell so I took them out and they've literally they're nearly two years old these guys this one down here is not too bad little super red sort of pattern on there but they're all doing extremely well and they do an amazing job of clearing up and they're great inhabitants a lot of you guys have asked me as well about um, what you can put in with shrimp what fish can uh, cohabitate with them and and all that kind of stuff now I've always found things like I mean obviously angels when they're babies that's fine but when they get older there they're going to eat every shrimp they can find ah I've got a little gold ram baby in there as well look at that I didn't see you in there mate you must have been hiding <laughs> oh brilliant there you are that was a surprise this morning bit of filming and I found something different I've still got the other golden rams in the other tank in with the uh, the shrimp but that little guy is full of beans look at that fantastic I think what I'll do is while I'm here I've got some of these water worms I'll squirt some of those in as well you can see them go down I'll put a big cloud of those guys in look at that millions of them and those fry will be into them in seconds you watch They'll slowly drift around and they'll be in amongst them, giving them the old chop. Look at that little guy there. That one seems to have, um, he's elongating out a bit now. And like I said before, guys, on other videos, these, these little water worms and micro worms are brilliant for your shrimps as well. So, um, if you want to get a culture going you can feed them first thing in the morning as well if you're new to the channel hit the old subscribe button there I'd love to have you aboard and the old notification bell for up and coming videos and again thank you for all you guys that have subscribed to the channel and that follow me and leave me some wonderful comments I really do appreciate that Look at those little guys nailing those little worms. And don't forget, when we do, we're doing twice a week water changes on this tank, okay? 50% I'm doing now. You may notice there's not as many as there was. Reason being, I've taken some out and given them to a friend. He's going to bring half of these on because I had that double spawn and I had so many in here. That it was not going to be big enough this tank and I haven't got anywhere else at the moment to uh, to put them so uh, so I didn't want the water to get fouled up and we've just got I'm not sure how many we've got in here now quite a few <laughs> still quite a few but they're um, they're coming along well 
starting to put on some size and you'll find if you keep lower numbers of fry in a tank they'll grow a lot quicker because your water parameters are going to be a lot cleaner those nitrates are going to be down and with regular water changes good healthy food they're going to grow a lot a lot quicker that's why sometimes you find if you've got a fry tank and you decide you get one bigger one and you put it in another tank with some other fish because it's big enough to go in with them you'll find that fish will come on in leaps and bounds because of the water is a lot cleaner and fry really do need clean water conditions they really I can't stress that enough they really do need good water that's why I've got double two sponge filters in this tank now because obviously we had a lot of fry in the first place but um, I've left those two filters in there because they're going to aid in cleaning that water up because as with sponge filters as you know you're going to get that um, that bacteria is going to be taking away that ammonia and that nitrate but the nitrite side of things it doesn't really help with a lot you see you get that anaerobic bacteria which you do get on filters in very very small amounts but not into not in a sponge filter that's why you need a nice little trickle filter or something like that or something with some of that bio home media in which is fantastic for colonizing anaerobic bacteria which will drop your nitrate down as well but because we've just got sponge filters in here they're going to get rid of the nitrate but not so much the nitrite that's where you've got to give them heavy water changes all the time okay very very important some of you guys have asked me on there how to set up a shrimp tank as well. If you want me to um, to set one up, I know it's only a couple of you have asked, but if it's something that you guys would like to see, um, setting up a shrimp tank from start to finish, drop it in the comment section below and I'll, I'll set one up in the house and, uh, and we'll do it start from finish, okay? If you guys are interested in starting up that kind of thing. We go back down here now, we can see this pregnant, this buried up little Sakura shrimp down here. Now you can normally tell she's not quite ready yet to drop those babies because you can't see the eyes. Now when you see the little black eyes appear, that's normally a chant, sorry, it's normally a sign of um, that they're going to drop the babies very soon. If she'll keep still for five minutes. I doubt that very much. Now there's a male there, look, you can see the male straight in front of you there, male and female, look at that. Like I said in the last video, females slightly rounder in the back, wider body cavity as you can see there to uh, take the eggs. Males are narrower, narrow tail, and they haven't got that big scale, that big second scale. You can't really see it brilliantly on the uh, on these yellow sakuras because of their transparent bodies. But I'll do my best. But she's a fine example of a female. Look at that, I've got some snail eggs in there as well. Little monkeys get everywhere, don't they? But she's not far, I'd say another week. You know, Alex, she'll be cleaning those eggs, cleaning their foot swimmers. Where's she gone? I was looking at something else then, sorry. Whoop. There you go, male and female. You can pause that there and you can see the difference. Mum and Dad and all the babies, the whole family there, look. Someone else has joined in now, another little male. She's mine, get away. Get away with you. <laughs> Fantastic little guys to watch, these really are really entertaining, especially if you get a nice magnifying glass and you have a, and you watch them, you know, quite close up. You can see those little feet rasping away. Brilliant. Hello angelfish. Here you go, is some of the some of the little better fry. Oh you've had a nobble on your tail, girl. 
some of the glow lights that we had breeding. There's a nice coloration on that one. Very nice little pattern. We go along here, what else have we got that I can show you? Got some of the rummy noses as well. I've got a lovely, uh, I've got six rummies. We're going to be breeding those in the spring. They're going to be putting on some weight. They're absolutely so busy, those guys. I can never keep up with them. We've got some ember tetras. I think we're going to breed them in the spring as well. These are some of the fish that I've been picking up this year to breed next year. What are you doing hiding up in there? I can see you hiding in amongst those roots. All over the place they are. Some of those little plecos that we bred earlier on in the year. Putting on some weight. I've rehomed quite a few of those now. Chewing away. Congo Tetra just lurking past there. I'll try and get you a picture of those two. There's the male. Beautiful pattern on him. Look at that. Stunning fins. Where's his girlfriend? Here she comes. And all the ember tetras. We've got some harlequins. We're going to breed them in the spring too. Some of you guys asked me to breed those. The, uh, the old emperor tetra there. Absolutely beautiful fish. I lost his, pet, uh, his partner sadly. We've got cardinal tetras. We're going to breed them in the spring too. Yes, I can see you. <laughs> Where's that rapashi? There it is. It's some of the Endler crosses that we were breeding. Some stunning, stunning colours in amongst these guys. They're super fast. By the time they get focused, they go out of focus. They're that quick. Look at that. Beautiful colourations. It's so much fun, guys. It really is when you're getting into breeding fish, hybridising fish, because you really never know what's going to come out. Absolutely beautiful colours, some of those. Look at that. The snails have uh, hit that rapashi grub pie as fast as that. The old leopards, leopard ram's horns. Prolific breeders. But they do a good job. And if you are inundated with snails, grab a load out, take them down to your local fish shop. Because they'll happily feed them to the puffer fish down there. Or if you're into snails and you love them, I do apologise for that comment. But some people get inundated with snails and they don't know what to do with them. Another nice little female better there. Beautiful colours through the, through the tail. And then we've got mum and dad angelfish. Now some of you guys have said to me, oh my god, you can't keep angelfish in with guppies and with smaller fish. They'll eat them. That's very true. If it's a small tank, this tank's very big, six foot long. And the fish are quite quick, so they'll they'll go by them, but they're very aware they're there. They can actually get away from them quite easily. So, but if you've got a small tank, I wouldn't advise it because the, uh, there's no room for escape. They're gonna they'll they'll just harass them until they get white spot, and um, and it's not going to be good. They'll stress them out so much. But in a big tank, you can get away with it. I uh, say anything five to six foot, you know, two by two, five two by two. Something like that, heavily planted, you can get away with it because they know they can escape. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. I think what we'll do is we'll stick some of the uh, that rapashi in with the shrimp as well, my little yellow Sakura tank, and um, and watch them have a chow down on some of that. Hey, I just found this little guy or little girl in there I'm not sure if there's berries underneath or that's just coloration in the in her scales there my eyes aren't what they used to be guys they're not oh the wife just bought me a coffee thank you very much I'll try and zoom in on those little those little feet and you can see what I mean with the um, 
with the little claws, they've got the little claws with the little brushes on the end. I don't know if you can see that. But they've got like a little multi-tool. Now, I think it was shell colour, guys. I don't think that was any... Uh, I don't think that was babies in there. But you can see how they put that water column full of little bits. There's those little feet going. Brilliant stuff. Never gets old looking at these guys. When you think that little that little girl there, she's probably nearly two years old now. But in multiple tanks, cleaning up and doing a doing a job. Still looking fabulous. Right now we're at the yellow Sakura tank, so I'm just going to put in some of this. I'm going to put in a fairly big blob. There it is. There, let that go down the front of the glass. So I can get some better footage for you. Let that sink away. Touchdown. And it won't be long before they're all over that because there's so many in there. They they strip the biofilm off in no time at all. That's why I've got to be adding the. Uh, the biozyme you can use back to AE what do you guys suggested that I forgot about that back to AE is very good as well as a supplement for your shrimps and the fry I use that I use gen chem polytase and the biozyme as well which is full of good stuff and as you can see there uh, it's going to be Mount Sakura there in a minute there's going to be so many of them on top of that it's going to be unreal Here's the other two shrimp that I said I was going to catch last time. The beautiful Bloody Mary there in the front. Super red colour, that one. Look at that. Reflective red coming off. And that's two girls in there, two, two big girls. I know they're going to crossbreed with the guys in there, which isn't going to be good. But we don't worry about things like that. I'm just going to try and show you that massive big frying pan scale that second scale if they'll uh, be kind enough to uh, to spin around for me can you see that big scale there that frying pan shape let me try and get a bit closer and a bit more still there you go you can see it. it's like a frying pan now that's that's that second scale back and that's how you can tell the females, okay? Oh, I'm all over the place now, look. So there you go, you can see it nice and clearly there. Strap goes over the back, and then there's that big frying pan shaped scale. Can't miss it. Now that's what you're looking for with the females, okay? And there's a can't really see at that angle, but it's like I say, it's more different. I think that's a male, that one. Great stuff. There you go. There's a picture for you. There you are. Look, it's growing every minute there. We're getting more and more on there. I do love the shrimps. You guys have been happy that I'm back on the shrimps again, doing a bit more. And I can do a bit more stuff like this now in the winter because obviously I'm going to run down the breeding stuff because of all the heaters and things that are going on and try and reduce my electric bill a bit I'm not a YouTube millionaire yet guys so um, <laughs> I can't afford to do it so uh, maybe one day eh? maybe one day I'll have a whole warehouse full of tanks that would be nice I'll just have to win the lottery first and then I'll take you on a journey how easy can it be just choosing a few numbers, eh? Can't be that hard, surely. I'll have a go later on tonight. Who knows? Waterfall's going well in Jackson's tank.
look at that well that working just right trimmed it back I know some of you guys said oh we liked it before but it will grow again in no time at all within a month that'll all be back and um, and lovely lush growth again as long as you're feeding it well with all these plants in here they put a big drain on the uh, on the resources in there so I put root tabs in the back in amongst the peat as you can see in the back there there's all peat in amongst there see oh there's your girlfriend there good morning having a play in the water for her lovely colour on her Look at that hungry little pleco. Yum 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 yum. They're loving it. See that little belly on there? They've got a constant spiral little stomach in plecos. Haven't got a stomach as such. It's just one big long intestine, as you can see, wound up inside there. So they're constantly eating, digesting, and pooing it out. And that's why if you've got a big pleco. So that is why you've got so much rubbish in your tank because they do produce a lot of waste my king tiger tank i've got to clean that out literally every other day i've got to siphon all that all the poo out and then put some fresh water back in because as you can see it's just constantly constantly coming out from that stomach and where are you going there you go Beautiful little fish. Got one there. Where's your little mate? And there's another one up there. They're all over the place in here still. Probably still got about 20 in here, I would have thought. Lurking around in the filters. Behind the filters. Everywhere else. We've got lots of little babies up here as well. Some little betters up here hiding in the... Looking for bits off the surface. As soon as I put my camera up there, they all start looking up in the air. Because they think I'm going to put some food in. But we've already done that. We've done that today, guys, haven't we? But you will keep eating. Hello. Some more little little plecos hiding under there. Someone wants to be in the shop. Lovely little gang of endless crosses there. Some of my favourite fish endless. So many colour variations. Some of them are very rare now as well. My little tetra there, my little black tetra still swimming sideways. <laughs> She's happy though. Oh, you're a nice colour. Lovely light blue, that one. <laughs> a little pleco coming back into the shot again. Yes, these little angels are doing absolutely fabulous at the moment. We're going to get some good and little healthy fish from these. And if they're anything like mum and dad, they're going to be stunning fish. Come out to say hello of you. One of my other ones I culled out of my main tank many moons back. Still going strong, cleaning away. Let's go back and see these yellow sakuras. I think, I think there's going to be millions of them all over that food now. Ah yes, lots and lots of little babies in there as well, we've still got some of the golden rams in here as well, some of the baby gold rams, you can see them zipping around. They normally hiding around the back and amongst the Anubias there, but what a mass, I've got to start getting rid of some of these soon, I think I'm thinning a tank out, mind you if I'm going to be setting up a new tank 
I can put some in there. Hello, Jackson. You've come out for a little chat, have you? Hello, mate. No, you've had your breakfast. No more. No more for you until later on this evening. His colours are coming in lovely now. Look at that. Really, really nice blue coming through now. Magic stuff. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you now. Me and Jackson are going to leave you. Hope you enjoyed that little run around in the uh, in the workshop here. All my koi are actually asleep now. There's one there on the bottom. I've put the covers on outside now, as you can see. But they're all chilled out on the bottom. Temperature in here now is around 9 degrees, so we're not feeding them anymore. And they're going to sleep now and through to the spring. So they're going to have no more food now until the spring, but they've put lots of weight on. All looking great. And that extra weight's going to take them through now to the spring where we start another year. Anyway, guys, as always, I love you loads. Thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourselves. From me and that gorgeous little boy, I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Bye, guys. Just me and my guitar.